Hey, welcome back to How to Medicaid. Do you also hate slow internet? And do you also get crazy when you need to wait for your YouTube videos to buffer? Then maybe 5G is the solution to all of your answers. Or is it like skeptics say, a major health hazard for all of us? In today's video, we will answer the trending question. Will clicking the like button make this video go viral? Oh, um, no, I mean, is 5G dangerous? My name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you. So if I somehow could persuade you to click the subscribe and notification button, then feel free to do so. Before we start though, a quick disclaimer, this video is meant purely informational, this is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. So what is going on with 5G and is it dangerous? To answer this question, we need to take a closer look at the origin of human nature. Each and every one of us is a product of millions of years of evolution. It used to be harsh times here at planet Earth, and only the best evolved, the strongest humans could pass on their DNA. Their unique characteristics were passed down through the next generation. This is what is called survival of the fittest, and this is what made mankind as it is today. Considering this, it's easy to see why humans are afraid for new things. We were surely selected on this characteristic. Because if you weren't afraid in this hostile world, you would probably take too much risk and be eaten, killed or whatever terrible thing that could happen to humans 200,000 BC, that would happen to you. It's this skepticism we still see among humans to this day. Every technological advancement came with severe protest. We humans are afraid for new things because we are selected to do so. Don't get me wrong, it's a natural and frankly smart initial response. But after this reflex of fear, we need to check if indeed this fear is grounded. Because if we wouldn't do that, we were nothing more than fancy monkeys. And we wouldn't have come so far. We wouldn't have houses, cars, computers, and we wouldn't be humans. The point I'm trying to make is, we humans are often scared for new things, but that doesn't mean they are necessarily bad or dangerous. So now then, let's tap over our initial fears and discover what 5G really is. 5G stands for the fifth generation of wireless information transfer technology, which makes sense as the previous generations were called 4G and 3G. 5G works via emitting electromagnetic radiation but does so in higher frequencies as the previous generations. 5G will use the frequency bands of 30 to 300 GHz, while 4G only use frequency bands of 6 GHz. This allows 5G to transfer way bigger data packages, upwards to 10 GB per second. This is way faster than 4G, and it also has lower latency as well as unparalleled speed. In fact, this is so much faster than 4G that it's completely incomparable and it will completely change our wireless world. Way faster upload speed, amazing advanced apps and augmented reality will all be possible by the use of 5G. Now, all those amazing new prospects, they sound great, but the question still remains, is 5G dangerous? Now, in the past, hundreds of studies have been done to test if the electromagnetic radiation cell phones emit are dangerous for the human health. And none of the studies ever found that it was. Now to understand this, it's important that you know a little bit about the different types of radiation there are. First, and the most feared one, is ionizing radiation, famous from the atomic bombs. This is often the only thing people think of when they hear the word radiation, while it only means to emit or precious sun emits warmth in the form of infrared radiation, completely harmless, and our microwave heats up the food I just ate before shooting the video by the use of microwave radiation, also completely harmless unless you crawl yourself into the microwave, don't do that. Radiation is not necessarily dangerous, ionizing radiation however is dangerous for humans. It has an extremely short wavelength and high frequency and enough energy to knock electrons loose from atoms. This can alter molecules in our body and therefore damage our DNA. It's ultimately this damage in our DNA 
that can lead to cancer and other diseases. So remember, ionizing radiation is dangerous. Luckily, 5G and our cell phones for that matter only emit non-ionizing radiation. This type of radiation does not carry enough energy to break molecular bonds. This means that theoretically it cannot damage our DNA. In addition, 5G uses a much higher frequency than 3 or 4G. It gives it the ability to transform more data per second. But according to the laws of physics, with greater frequency comes poorer range or penetration. This means that 5G networks have problems penetrating solid objects like our houses, cars and even our skin. So our precious data center here is protected by our skin and our skull. So 5G is great and we have nothing to worry about? Mm, not completely. Because recently 248 researchers petitioned the World Health Organization to take another look at 5G networks. And not only for us humans, but also for precious environment. A big part of this is the lack of good scientific evidence on the long-term effects of 5G networks. And some new studies that caution us to be a little bit more careful with adapting 5G networks. I want to discuss two of the recent studies with you. They are both sending the same message and I think it's important that you hear it to draw your own conclusions. First of all, both articles are reviews, in which the authors explore recent studies done on the biological and health effects of electromagnetic radiation, as well as the medium to long term effects of 5G networks. Both articles acknowledge that the evidence against electromagnetic radiation in some cases is a bit controversial or preliminary. However, correct data is slowly accumulating and they both claim that even based on this data they can see interactions between biological systems and electromagnetic radiation. This could possibly lead to oncologic, which means cancerous and non-oncologic effects of the radiation. But as far as I can tell, only few scientific studies really had any good evidence. Most were some vague assumptions based on subsets of the data they use or were effects seen in cells or animals, not necessarily relatable to effects in humans. <music> Professor Andrew Woods tells us that long-term harmful effects of 5G networks are very unlikely. First of all, because we have been using electromagnetic radiation in cell phones for more than 40 years now. In this time, we didn't see any increase in brain tumors or any other form of cancer which we could link at cell phone usage. Secondly, the electromagnetic radiation used in 5G networks is nothing new. It has been used for more than 50 years already in radar technology and in airports and none health hazards were ever seen with the use of 5G. This brings us to the conclusion. At first, 5G sounds great, amazing and you are blinded by all the amazing prospects. But then you realize that maybe, as with all things that sound too good to be true, that maybe is. And there are indeed signs that 5G might potentially be harmful for us. Only good evidence is lacking and we can at this moment not prove, but neither refute that 5G is dangerous. Therefore, new and good studies need to be done to show the health effects of electromagnetic radiation in humans and especially the long-term effects of 5G among humans. That's it. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions whatsoever, ask them in the comment section and I do my best to answer them. Before you go, leave a like though. This lets YouTube know this was a good video, you enjoyed it and it's worth recommending to other people. Thank you and see you next week. Bye bye.